Bank of America confirmed after this no one will buy XRP. XRP to $45,000. The head of global banking services at Bank of America highly appreciated the Ripple cryptocurrency project and its ability to integrate with traditional banking services. Welcome to the Finance Up channel. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. Speaking on the podcast, Julie Harris from BOA discussed new payment methods for businesses and how they can improve efficiency. This is not about our platform and our capabilities, but about you as a customer and the infrastructure you have, as well as our ability to integrate, whether it's platforms and capabilities that we have created, or partnerships that we have with companies like Ripple or Swift quote she said these are fintechs with whom we cooperate they have gone through all of our strict legal and regulatory requirements and we can use our banking services as a platform to provide that to you quote we are partnering with fintechs like ripple or swift julie harris head of global banking speculation surrounding ripple's ambiguous partnership with bank of america has been growing over the past four years and in october ripple announced that it had been working with the bank since 2016. so far Neither Ripple nor Bank of America have provided any details about the partnership, but we can assume that it is based on cross-border payments in light of Harris's comments about Ripple along with Swift. Julie Harris, head of Global Banking Digital Strategy, commented on a podcast published by Bank of America. The conversation focused on new payment methods available to businesses and the growing need for faster and more efficient methods. On this topic, Harris stated, It's not about our platform and our capabilities, but about you as a customer and the infrastructure you have, as well as our integration capabilities, whether it's platforms and capabilities that we have created, or our partnerships with companies like Ripple or Swift. These are fintechs with whom we cooperate. They have gone through all our strict legal and regulatory requirements, and we can use our banking services as a platform to provide you with this. Harris did not provide any details about how the bank will use Ripple. Given that she mentioned SWIFT in the same context, it's reasonable to assume that cross-border payments are part of the plan. There have been rumors for a long time that Bank of America plans to start using Ripple. In October last year, Ripple confirmed that it had been working with the bank since 2016, but only admitted that it was part of a pilot project. Last year, the banking giant hired at least one Ripple specialist, but did not provide details. The main rumor is that Bank of America is planning to start using RippleNet. If true, such a move would have a huge impact on the platform. However, it is worth noting that there are other means by which the bank can use Ripple technology, so such assumptions are premature. Bank of America has not yet made official statements about its plans for Ripple. Thus, Harris's statement deserves attention. However, there is no doubt that the traditional banking industry is rapidly exploring the use of distributed ledger technology for a wide range of applications. Thus, blockchain assets will almost certainly become a major element of global finance in the near future. In this context, Ripple is in a strong position moving forward. There have been several hints that Bank of America may be working with Ripple. At the Swell event organized by the company this year, it was announced that Bank of America uses X-Current technology. The bank also named Ripple in a patent application filed last year. However, this was not enough to confirm the alleged partnership between Bank of America and Ripple. Information on the Ripple website shows that the partnership between these two names is now publicly available. By adding the bank's logo to its website, Ripple confirmed that Bank of America is also included in the RippleNet platform. On Wednesday, the SEC added a small victory to its plate in the ongoing case against Ripple Lab, as a result of which the judge granted the SEC's request to file a brief response in connection with the SEC's attorney-client confidentiality claims regarding 2018 communications made by the former corporation. CFO William Hinman, who pointed out that Ethereum is not a security. The disclosed emails showed that Hinman deliberately had a conflict of interest in delivering the speech before it was delivered. Based on my understanding of the current state of the Ether, the Ethereum network and its decentralized structure, the current offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions, Hinman said back in 2018. In his speech, he expressed the opinion that Ether is not a security, 
stating that, based on my understanding of the current state of Ether, the Ethereum network and its decentralized structure, the current offers and sales of Ether are not transactions with securities. The cost of the Ether increased immediately after Mr. Hinman's speech, said the anti-corruption service Empower Oversight. However, Hinman makes four arguments against the sex rationale, arguing that the 2018 communications cannot be protected by attorney-client confidentiality. Although Hinman could hire a lawyer to perform official duties, protecting any correspondence with attorney-client confidentiality, any consultations conducted in his personal capacity did not fall under this scope. In addition, Hinman's message will not contain confidential agency information. Finally, if the SEC finds any information that can be protected, the only party that can claim attorney-client privilege will be Hinman. The SEC must respond to Phelan's arguments by May 18. Ever since the SEC sued Ripple and its executives at the end of the Trump administration, a legal battle has arisen to resolve the dispute out of court. The sex main argument in the ongoing lawsuit centers on Ripple's accusation of violating the Securities Act of 1933 with its XRP token. Ripple's defense is that XRP serves purposes that invalidate its classification as a security. The application mentions the token's function as a medium of exchange, and therefore the SEC has no authority to regulate it. Ripple claims that its currency is used as an intermediary for money transfers and is not a security. After that, Ripple's defense requested internal communications from the SEC regarding potential uncertainty about which assets the SEC could control, which the judge granted on a limited basis. Ripple then stated that the SEC did not specify in a timely manner which assets fall under its jurisdiction, without warning the company about how current laws apply to its product. The SEC objected, stating that Ripple received legal advice in 2012 defining XRP as an investment vehicle requiring SEC oversight. Up until Hinman's statements in 2018, the Securities and Exchange Commission was investigating whether Ethereum's close ties with its founders made it centralized, making it a security. Hinman's speech implied that if the Ether was bought primarily to participate in a decentralized network, and not to profit from trading on exchanges, then it could not be considered a security. The live XRP price today is $0.88 United States dollars with a 24-hour trading volume of $3,740,000,000 United States dollars. We update our XRP to USD price in real time. XRP is down 0.4% in the last 24 hours. Do you think XRP will be able to win the court and restore its former price? Write the answers in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, then don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.